Hey guys, Stephen here from Heresy Academy. In this video, I'm going to add in some coins. So I'm going to start off with the coin animation and then set up a script that will basic check collision with our player, will destroy itself and give us some points. So in the pack that I'm going to put onto, put with the project files, we're going to have a copper coin, a gold coin, and a silver coin. So I mean, you could call it bronze, I suppose. Um, so just for this, I'll just start off with a gold coin. And it's going to be a big, medium, and small, depends on what you fancy. So I'm just going to drop that in. And that looks like a relative, relatively decent size. But then, obviously, to compare the medium, just to sort of show you, you can have it like that. And of course, you can now imagine what the small is going to be like. Have it like that. So, obviously, not everything's going to suit um, this specific game. But I mean, of course, you know, you. you you could put this to 25 pixels per unit, click on apply, there you go. But you may notice, um, you may notice that I can't even access my uh, coins in the inspector, in the thingy view. Let's go into this now. Yeah. So you may notice now, doing the pixels per unit, there's the canvas all over there. Pixels per unit here, um, you lose the sort of well, you lose everything really. So uh, it's always best to obviously try and make sure the assets come in brilliantly. But as well, if you keep that to 25 pixels per unit and you change the filter mode to no filter, no filter, click on apply. You may see a slight change where it will try and pick up the pixels. But again, you're now thinking. Let's see, that was 21 by 21 pixels with a small. I'll try and make it making it to be 82 by 84, so it should be 84 by 84. So you're, uh, you're times it by four, obviously I could have done it 25 pixels. Times it by four, so it's, eventually it's gonna sort of give out on you and say no, I've had enough. Let's put this back linear just to see. It doesn't really make much difference, but there we go. So of course, we may choose to go with a smaller coin later on, but I'm gonna go for the bigger coin now. And actually I'll take that out as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the uh, set up the animation, and this is a sort of a shortcut way to do it. And I'm just bring us back to our player there. So what I'm going to do because you've got different stages here, you may be able to watch in this. So watch, you know, the different ones basically rotating, spinning. You could do an animation and make it a 3D object to mess around, but it's quite a bit of work for you to do for you to be able to actually. Um, to do effective, um, I mean, sorry, not 3D, mate. you can change the scale and have it sort of shrink, but you want to sort of see this detail here, and it sort of gives it this sort of 3D look as it spins around as well. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab them all and I'm going to drag them in, and it's going to open up the save option. So, make sure we put it into the assets, into the animation. I'm just going to call it coin spin save animation, and now. You should see it's got an animator, and then the controller is big, big, trip, trip, uh, quadruple O, kappa. So I'll just change the name to this, uh, change the name of this to coin. Um, same for the buzzsaw one, I didn't notice this one. Let's change that to be the buzzsaw. I don't like, I don't even know if it's called a buzzsaw, I'll just click saw blade. But yeah, so you can open this up, and you can see on entry, it's going to go through the coin spin. And I don't want it to do anything else. Uh, you, you could set up like a particle effect to have it go like, you know, shatter into golden pieces, I suppose. Um, but obviously, I'm just going to keep it this coin spin as entry. So I may want to change the speed here. So I'm going to keep this open for now. And I'm going to just bump this up a little bit. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to click play. So you see it spin. I may want to change the speed. Maybe it spins all right. One thing to consider though is dragging it in there is not always the most effective way. But to be fair, that spins quite fine. You can, of course, change the speed. No, I just saw it at 10. You know, you can mess around with the speed there. I'm actually happy with it being at 2, it would be at 1, but I might. No, I'll just give it a 1. So, yeah. So we're going to close that off, so like I said, you don't have to change anything in here, keep it at entry, so I can actually close my animator now. 
in doing this and just dragging it dragging it in um, it creates itself an animator it assigns the controller there and it also saves that animation here so well that's it that's everything done but in a lot of cases you can just like drag your sprites together drag the sprites together just drop them into here as one object and it will automatically compile it as animation you may want to uh, go in here click on open the animation window oh no that's animator sorry the coin spin I meant to open you click that the animation animation window should pop up eventually it does there uh, 12 frames per second is its current speed and for some reason the animation window is not coming up did I even click it I'm sure I did uh, it's not really a big deal but I'll just try and show you now there so what you could do um, you click on play here you can see it move you, you may want to um, change the position make it quicker in here change the sprites itself uh, maybe they were put into a wrong order so you just swap, swap a few around stuff like that but I mean obviously we've seen that this one has gone all right but yeah I just want to show you um, you, know, you just click play here it gives you the preview and this is what you could do if you were to change how it looks and stuff like that on the speed so yeah that's how you get it to uh, well, that's how you set up the animation there so I'm going to call this uh, just call it gold coin because we've got three other coins we want to put in later and what I'm going to do have we got a prefab folder we do so I'm going to drag it into prefab folder I'm going to drag it in here just because any changes I make I want to make it to to this object and make it affect all the coins. An example of this, let me just, uh, I don't want to go like that to be fair, I'm going to just change the position of it, so hold down control to move it, you can see it's 100 pixels per, per unit so it's moving perfectly everywhere we want it to go. I'm just going to drop one here, so I just dragged it there, I didn't mean to hold control, and drop one down there. I'm meant to duplicate it and then drag it across there's one there as well what I'm going to do just to show you the prefab working as well I'm going to go down to the prefab I'm going to add a component and I'm going to make it a circle collider because you know, it's a circular object I'm just going to click it I don't want to give it a material just yet and we may put oh dear there we go and you see the circle automatically goes around it so it all looks pretty good um, like I said, I don't want to give it a material yet, but I may give the player a material, depends on how it acts and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, you see now with gold coin 1 and gold coin 2, the uh, it's already attached here because these are the prefabs. So any change I make to the prefab, like I said, it will affect everything. So we close all these options off, because the next thing I want to do is give it a script. So I'm going to go and add component, just click on new script. And I'm just going to call this coin because we're going to have anything related to our coins put into here so I'm just going to drag it from the oh when they compiled first it just does it when you make a new script it compiles just to check and make sure this stuff's right even though it is right because it makes it like that so drag it into the script folder uh, clicking everywhere today because I've moved it it's compiling it again of course and I'm going to open it in Mono Develop, which is already open, but I'm opening a new script, so it may take a second or two. I mean, it may not, may not open at all, you know, it depends how it feels. There we go. Make sure it's all happy there. Can I go in? Yes. Yeah, it's good. Okay. So in this script, I'm going to give it a public integer, and this is going to tie in with our integer over here somewhere a public static void add points integers points and add this so in the coin section I'm going to give it a public integer and it's going to be called points and then I'm not going to use the start function I'm not going to use the update function yet may make some changes afterwards if you want to mess around with animations I mean a good idea well maybe not a good idea to everyone but you could do your gold coins and then have it change in animation to be the silver coins and then change down to the copper coins after a certain amount of time like if an enemy drops a coin and then if you leave it for ages it just lose, goes to a silver, goes to a bronze 
just over time to I don't know, make it lose value or something like that or you could have it flash you want to do different animations and stuff like that um, so yeah you, you could use different functions at the start update fix update awake anything you wanted to do so I'm gonna go with a void aha uh -huh. let's give me a second with the circle collider it kind of helps me if I set something up on the circle collider I just want to set it to be is trigger so it's not a solid object so I can go through it and I can do the on trigger event so go back to my script and it's called on trigger enter 2d this is one of the ones provided by unity so it's not like I'm making it myself and inside these brackets I'm just going to go for the collider 2d and call this other it gives me the information of the person that's well, of the thing that's just collided with it and then just like before we've done it we're going to go if other dot name is equal to and i think we call it player with a capital b maybe we call it player with a, capital, with a lowercase but anyway if other dot name equals player open some more curlers then what we want to do is get the level manager then dot add points and if you've ever watched uh, my breakout video I had an issue referencing the script it's because I didn't make it public static and then the argument for this would be our points and then uh, do semicolon so we're giving it the information here of the information here so whatever value we give this coin like the gold coin could be worth 5 it could be worth 10 um, so we'll set the value of that I mean, you could decide now if this is if this was like the only coin in the game. You could just go points equal five or something. But because we're going to assign this to script to two different coins, we can change the value in the inspector sort of thing. So yeah, then obviously what we want to do is we want to get rid of the uh, what's it called? Get rid of the coin. So get rid of game object, which is going to be the object of which the script is attached to. We'll save that and then like I said we're gonna go over here we're gonna use our add points here the integer points so when you write it you want to write um, dot add points and instead of writing like that and doing nothing the, the brackets you're using contain the information points which is the integer that you've set up in this one so like I said you can save that now um, no changes here yet. then head over back to unity I, maybe I'll change the uh, the coin to be the medium one afterwards or something. I may decide to do that. And you cannot explicitly convert type string to bool. Um, what on earth have I done? So on line 20, on the coins, if other.name is equal to Okay, what, what have we done now? Have we done something wrong? Oh, yes. Sorry about that. i make sure you do two equal marks. Save that. Drop it back in. Forgot about that. You've got to make sure you put two equal marks, um, you know, rather than just one. Because uh, I, I don't want to understand it myself, but if you put two, uh, you're talking about a string. But if you put one, you're talking about a bool sort of thing. It's, it's weird. But yeah, so we'll save this. And you click on play. The reason it's weird, by the way, is because like when you come to adding points, you can change the string to equals and stuff. But then we go along here, and let me just set it up. Oh, here's one thing I didn't do. Um, I didn't change the uh, didn't put the anchor of our score points. Um, didn't set the anchor. I don't think we did. Anyway, yeah. When we can walk, we can jump. So I'll set up some platforms later on so we can actually start jumping and stuff. But you select what? Oh, hang on. <laughs> Just press play and then go to the gold coins because they all have the script att attached. But we want to go to the gold coin prefab. Open up the coin and let's give it a value of 15 points. Just because I want to try and be a bit random. Um, I'll click play and show you it in work and I'll make sure we set the anchor point of our score object. As it loads again, so again, like I said, you can walk and jump and stuff. We have 15 and got 30. And now, 
I mean, obviously, if we jump off the edge, it's not you know it's not going to do us any favors. But we could jump onto that and die and respawn. But the, the coins don't respawn, so I can set that up again. Well, I'll set it up so they can respawn again, perhaps. But if you're doing it as just a simple respawn, then you know you don't want to keep giving them thousands and thousands of coins. Then you carry on with your adventure, go again. You can also have it where if you die, you could lose some points. You could set up some death points or something, and we'll give it a negative value. And basically, use the same function um, of add points because it's uh, it's universal inside your level manager. So you could uh, use that function and give it a value of points for a negative value, or give it minus points, something like that. Because um, you could make the the coin points to be uh, public static integer so you can access it all around and stuff but it's a bit of messing around <clears throat> so yeah that's one thing and another would be to make sure I did so is it in the right position now or what? oh yeah looks like the score is in the right position it was just got zoomed in okay then man that's all right then so leave it at that that'll be it for this video then uh i'm not sure the next one maybe we'll start adding an enemy so you can see the area is getting a bit crowded now so i'm going to start adding some more bit of an extension so i'd want the camera to follow along um adding some enemies um do we want to shoot or do we want to make it like a melee game or a jump on enemy that'll be beyond the classic enemy uh the classic games where you just got to jump on enemy to kill them stuff like that so we'll put considerations into that um but yeah, that's it for this video. That's how you set up your coins and do the quick animation and set up the coin script so you can add your points to the score that we set up in the video before. So if you missed that, then you know jump back. I mean, it's not the most complicated thing to do, but uh, it's always worth always going over revising it. So yeah, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to catch on the next videos. And until the next video, I'll see you soon.